Hey my friends, Mark Allred here again with you today for another Boss RC300 tip. If you've been doing this for a while and you're trying to dial, dial things in, one of the problems that we have as live loopers is that you have three tracks on the Boss RC300 that most often come through a sig single output. And if you try to play live to or record, your different tracks through one single output, it can be really difficult. Let's say you have track one's a guitar sound, track two is a bass sound and you're using an octave pedal on your guitar and bass, and track three is a beatboxing sound. You want to have an individual mix for each one of those tracks or let's say you're recording, you want to be able to affect each one of those tracks individually to get a really good recording sound. And if you have a single output routed for that audio, that's really hard to do, if not impossible. So that's what I'm gonna show you how to do. Um, if you like what you're hearing, please like, share, and subscribe, and all that fun stuff so I can keep making videos for you. Let's dig into it because if you try to read the manual, it's really, really difficult. I'm gonna boil it down for you in a couple of steps. Here we go. All right, so let's start digging into this. Um, what I'm gonna start off with is explain, here's my live signal from my guitar, and most likely from your effects as well. So this is coming through my effects into input left mono. So we're gonna come over here and we're gonna edit how first the sound is coming out from my live signal. So we're gonna come into, let's start with a memory that you're not using. So I'm gonna use memory three. Go to memory edit, that button there. And then let's pan over using this arrow button to input out. So when you first come in here, it'll say main plus sub, click it over to the right and then it'll say mute. That's what we want. And then that means your live signal coming out will be muted. You don't want to have your live signal coming out. So we're gonna click on right once, twice, now it's saved. Now we're gonna start editing the individual tracks and what you record here, how that comes out. So we're gonna edit them here, starting with this one, edit track one. And then we're gonna use these toggle switches until we get all the way over to output. Right now I have it already set to sub. It's going to say either main plus sub, sub or main. Now I want it to say sub. So let's write that once, twice. Now it's saved. Then we're going to come back, click edit again on the track, use the arrow switch until you get to pan. Now you want to rotate your switch this little guy here until it says L50. That means 100% of this track of track one is gonna come out of your sub output left. So let's click right once, twice. Now it's saved, meaning whatever you record here is only gonna come out of here now. So what we do, boom, that guy. I'll show you that at the end. So let's, boom, let's do it again. So track two, same idea. Click it once, toggle over till we get to output. Now I want this to be sub as well because we're gonna pan it to the right. So sub, save that, click right twice. Come back over here, edit, toggle over till we get to pan. Now I've already set it up. So it says R but it needs to say R50. Boom, so let's click right twice. Now it's saved. That means sub output right. That's where track two is gonna come out of. All right, last one. Track three, let's do the same thing. Track three, toggle over. Output main, because now we're switching it over to the main, but we only want it to come out of the left mono side. So let's save that main once, twice, now it's saved. Come back, toggle over. So you see pan, pan. Now I want it on the left, 50 per, 50, number 50, but that means 100%. So let's save that, right once, twice, boom. Now we're done. So now what we have is, whatever I loop on these individual tracks will only come out of an individual jack, right? So let's talk about that now a little bit. So, I can route that guy, that guy, and that guy. And why this matters is so that if you're, if you're recording, or no, let's say you're playing live, right? You're playing live, 
and the guy at the front of the house wants to be able to mix just that track one because that's a that's a guitar sound and he wants to be able to mix track two because that's where you have your your octave pedal turning your guitar into a bass sound and your track three is actually where you're beatboxing and so each one of those requires a specific mix and let's say you're you're recording you might want to use different plugins for each one of those tracks so you can get the mix correctly because usually what happens is that we'll have one instrument in with all of our effects and only that going out so you're combining your live guitar your guitar loop your bass loop your beatboxing or any of your other instrumentation into one single output which is super hard to mix and to get the right sound so that's you know one killer way to route your audio so you can get a much better sound coming out of your looping all right all right, and that's it. Hopefully that really simplified the process for you, and now you can route your audio better for live performances and recording, and hopefully I saved you a bunch of time because that was painful for me to try to figure out when I first learned how to do it. All right, until next time, I'm Mark Allred.